Hello, welcome to Juniper Level Botanic Garden, the home of Plant Delights Nursery. Um, th this is something we're really excited about. This is a, sa a sable, a palm that was discovered just in the 1990s. And um, in uh, Tamaulipas State in Mexico, um, Tony, with uh, the gentleman from uh, Yuckadoo Nursery, uh, discovered it and um, instantly realized it was something different from Sable Minor. Yet the uh, palm expert said, oh no, it's just a variation on Sable Minor. Well, just last month, the September of 2025, um, we got confirmation that it is a distinct species. It is a close ally of Sable Minor, but it is a, uh, deserves its own um, status as a distinct species. And as it's from Tamaulipas, it's now called Sable Tamaulipensis. The ensis end of the name, E-N-S-I-S, means from, so it means the sable palm from um, Tamaulipas. Um, you know, superficially it looks a lot like a big sable, um, but the thing that is most distinct is the uh, inflorescence, which I guess um, becomes the infrutescence. Um, it is very weighty, it's fairly short, um, it doesn't, um, in Sable Minor, the, the uh, stalk of fruit is up above the plant, and we'll see that in a moment. And the individual seeds, the individual fruits, there are one-seeded fruit, sort of like an avocado, um, are larger, and we'll compare the two of them in a moment. And I, I would, we harvest all the seed um, before they're shed, in part because we use them to produce the plant um, for our nursery, uh, for selling, and um, we also collect the seed to sell to uh, uh, seed companies that resell the seed. But um, when uh, when it, we will wait until the seed, the fruit, turn black. I noticed some sable minor that were starting to turn black, but usually it's late in the year or very early in the following year that we collect all the seed. We also collect them because every seed seems to germinate in the garden, so. We prevent um, uh, the production of seedlings in the garden, which are then need to be weeded out. But when we get to the point of harvesting this, I'm real curious to weigh the whole thing because there's a lot of weight, weight in all these fruit. Um, I also really enjoy the sound of a sable palm. The leaves are so stiff. You know, they're like, lightweight uh, plastic but perfectly rigid um, and so we'll step over here and see a typical sable miner oh i should have uh, you know this is sable miner uh, they're not uh, cooperating in that typically the, the fruit spikes are up high up above the foliage. Um, and you can see that these fruit are starting to turn black. Um, once they turn black, we'll clean them and actually the, the black skin slips off quite readily and the, the seed inside is also black. Um, that's the skin from the first one, but it just slips off. Um, they're real easy to grow from seed. They don't require any treatment. Um, they just take a while before they'll germinate. Um, oh, they're, now that I've had them fully cleaned, they're sort of very dark brown and not uh, black like the outside of the fruit but there's just one seed in each one of those fruits. 
And uh, I use the term fruit from a botanical standpoint, not that they're edible or not, but just uh, the, a fruit of a flowering plant is that part of the plant that bears the seed. So they could be edible fruit or poisonous fruit or, you know, something in between. But um, this is a, a, a short growing form of sable minor. Um, it's a very variable species. Some of them can be nearly as big as the um, uh, sable tamalipensis, um, but others are short like this. And sable minor has a really wide distribution. It's from like the coast, coastal Virginia all the way down the east coast, um, then around Florida and all through the Gulf Coast and probably a bit a ways up the uh, Mississippi River Valley. Um, it's a, a beautiful thing. I think of the leaves, well, also the same old top of lepus. It's like a bunch of exclamation points in the garden. Um, and, you know, hardy to uh, 6B or 7A, they're, um, well, 6B is probably the coldest you would go with uh, most of them. Um, it's a beautiful evergreen year-round presence in the garden. Well, let me take a, a few of these. Well, I, I can afford to take a little part of these. You can, this is the sable minor I just cut off of the plant we just saw. And this is the sable tamalipas, ta tamalipensis. Um, you know, the fruit of tamalipensis are described as a bit bigger than minor, but my goodness, this is typical minor and these are tremendously bigger. Um, you know, they, the, the the uh, early uh, well the people who discovered tamalipensis in the wild thought it was something di distinct from minor, um, and that was based just on physical characteristics. One you can see with their eyes, but the distinction was confirmed also by DNA tests. So, you know, the chromosome analysis showed that they were close allies but they were not the same species so it's really exciting to have um, our s suspicion confirmed and we now can formally call this sable tamalipensis um, it's been growing in these gardens since um, the late 1990s um, we've been selling it since 2006 um, it's a beautiful landscape plant and glad to share that bit of information on it. Thank you for your time today and I hope to see you again in the garden.